All right, welcome back. It's our final guest of the day. We have uh, Babalola Silas, uh, who is a seasoned Hollywood actor, film producer, and uh, of course a theater practitioner. He's featured in a lot of uh, movies and of course a uh, series, including Papa Jasko, Battleground, The Johnsons, quite a number of them. And uh, yeah, American Playboy is his first effort at uh, making his own full feature length movie. American Playboy. Let's, since you already, uh, we already have that. Um, okay, let's talk about American Playboy. What, uh, what inspired the name American Playboy? What, what's, what's, what's it about? Um, well, based on the background of the story, you know, uh, I mean, I have some part of the story that, that are personal experiences. Okay. So, but it's like, okay, yeah, this guy traveled abroad. It's a general thing that, you know, as a, a young man, mm. you're growing up, uh, when you get to a stage, you try to chase women and stuff. Mm. And when you are broke, you mm. already know that no woman is going to look your way. Mm. Yeah, so the background of the story is that, okay, this guy, uh, when he, before he traveled abroad, he had, you know, a couple of bad experiences with women. And, uh, you know, I, as a creative, I put my uh, creative imagination to work, and that's it. So you said part of this is also your personal. You have some aspects of your personal story in this. What, what, what parts of it were you, uh, ah, you know, resonate with you personally? You know, rejection. Mm. You know, you talk to a woman. Oh, you know, you're not up to my standard. Mm. Uh, these, oh, no, you, you're not my type of man and, and stuff. So, yeah. You've been in this industry for quite a while, yes. This is your first feature length. But before you got into this, let's talk about your origins and uh, how you started as an actor. Yeah, um, I actually started with the, um, the Yoruba side of the uh, uh, industry. Um, back then, we used to have this uh, uh, Riazza ground around the Fadi. Uh, if you remember Alana from back in the days, anybody who has watched them, uh, what's the title of this movie? Um, uh, Agumbanero. Uh, okay. Yeah, the title of the movie is Agumbanero. Okay. It was produced by Alana back then. So Alana owned this, uh, like a film school sort okay. of. So okay. that's where we started. Then uh, along the line, of course, my my intention was to you know, to do you know, to to be able to cut across. But then you needed I mean you need like somewhere a platform or to, something yeah, like a platform that. Platform to groom yourself and stuff. So after you know getting trained over there, some of our lecturers are like a cut you know cut across uh, practitioner. So I was I was uh, invited to uh, an audition, and that was it. That was how I joined the English side of the. Uh, yeah, I think that was like 2003, and I've been practicing. Ever no, since this thing, you just mentioned earlier, yeah, you know, there's been that back and forth, like a battle between Yoruba, a movie industry, and then the English speaking side. This, it seems like there's some sort of, should there be that kind of a divide? Because that has been going on for quite a while. You see, at times there's that thing going up against, and people are trying to think, oh, this, this part, you are not as elite as us, or something like that. There's been that battle going on. Why so? Um, I don't think I, I can say much about that, but this is what I think. Having, having experienced both, both sides, sides, yeah, I think one is more organized than the other. And I don't want anybody to quote me for that. I don't want to be, uh, to be um, crucified for that. Okay. But like I said, I've experienced it. Both sides, yeah, so, so you I, understand I what you're saying. Yeah. You understand what you're saying? Because like, for instance, when I first started, I went on a on a location and the experience was horrible. Mm. You know, like it's a Yoruba yeah. setting. You know, like you get on on a movie location, there was zero preparation mm. for for you as an actor. But then you went on the other side and and it's like two different worlds. Two different worlds. Like you you get there, the the preparation is top notch. Mm. You have a place to sleep. Every, like, for instance, I, I don't want to mention it, but I've gone on some uh, locations, like very popular uh, um, producers. Producers, okay. And 
you you were almost wishing the production welfare was <laughs> not attended end. to yeah you know like okay. you enjoy yourself, you enjoyed yourself you know? okay wonderful and you, you go on the other side and you're like you're wondering what's going on here but now yeah with the with netflix and all the rest coming in we're we now seeing a lot of um yoruba and epic movies that have coming out yeah people are putting money into them mm -hmm. you know and uh, but there's there's quite a number of them now uh, do you think that has helped the Yoruba movie or the epic industry as well? Absolutely. Where? Because now we see we see that there we see that there's that market in diaspora that is ready to consume most of these uh, you know uh, movies which are content. In, you know most of this content and all of that. Does that help the industry as it were? Absolutely. You know this is what I think. Uh, when when you have uh, resources to throw around, mm. you you organize better. Okay. And at the same time, I think uh, when, uh, despite the fact that you, you have resources, if you are a greedy person, mm. you still want to keep more to yourself. Exactly. So at times, it's not even the money so you have. So it's not even the money. Because it's... you might have little money, but you plan well. Mm -hmm. And they might have enough of money, and then, like you said, you keep a lot, and then you find out that you start, you know. Yeah, because I see here you know, some producers, people go on their, um, on their location for shoot, and they still suffer, mm. even though, you know, so to speak. There's money There's involved money in, the, in that production. Yeah. Because the, the, the system in the, I mean, on the other side is that you help me, I help you. So if, uh, if you are a producer and I'm a producer and uh, we, we have this trade by butter thing. Butter thing. So I won't pay you for your own production. You come and do my own. I come and I do your own. Come and do your own. But mm. now, what about the, the little ones? I, little ones that I mean, not children. Like but the ones that are known, yeah. the ones that are on your set as extras, the ones that are there because they are just looking for, because, you know, when I was, uh, before, there was a time I was shooting skits. Mm. That was the time I realized that there were a lot of people that are looking for opportunities. opportunities. Yeah, very true. And I, I see people taking advantage. Taking advantage of them. A lot of, of it does happen. It does happen. So, it does happen. But I've always been uh, this type of person that, you know, as much as possible, I like to be fair. Mm. So if, you, if you, first of all, if you come on my set, I, I'll make it clear that, okay, money is not really involved, but you'll be well fed. You'll be well, okay, at least I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll take care clear. of you. But some people, they, they, there wouldn't even be any, any kind of talks before the, yeah. you just get on the set and you realize that, okay, yeah, this is how it's going this to be. This is how it's going to be. But then I went on a set, you, you sign a contract, you, you are going to spend two days. This is what you are expecting as your uh, artist fee. Artist fee, yeah. When you are leaving yeah, everything you agreed on, you go home with. How do we, how, do, uh, how, how, just to round up with this kind of, how can there be a standard? How, how do you, in, in such a way, how do you root out this kind of producers that take advantage of people in those kind of ways? Is there any way that mm, can happen? Okay, like for instance, I belong to Tampan, okay. you know, which is more of like the Yoruba uh, yeah. side of the industry. I think uh, it's something that only the association will fight for. Can fight for it, okay. Yeah. So they would have to lie with the producers directly and maybe sanction or something, stop some people from... Yeah, because then another thing is if it's a personal desire to make sure that you are fair okay. to people, you know, like, there's a phrase, there's, there's this uh, uh, rapper, um, mm. Dr. Dre, he said something, he said, uh, I, used to be, I used to be a starving artist, okay. so I will never starve an artist. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice way to run, wrap it up. I used to be a starving artist, so I would never starve an artist. Talking about starving, I hope you don't mind. We have a little bit of cake for you this morning. I don't mind. Okay, so that we'll talk about it uh, when we can uh, check out. It's going to be in cinemas, right? Uh, yeah. American Playboy.